Hello, Pat Hennon here again. About a year ago, I did a little videotape. Somebody put two models on a table and said, Pat, would you compare those? And off the cuff, I went on for probably too long. Within a month or two, there were 7,000 hits on this. I was flabbergasted. Well, today we're up to 700,000 hits, and uh, most of them very complimentary, but there have been a few uh, people who uh, disparaged the, uh, the whole thing. So I'd like to uh, address some of that. I don't at all mean that, that this form of construction should be replaced by this form of construction. And I did start off that uh, former discussion by saying that every type of construction has its place, from straw bale to stick frame to steel to concrete block to anything all over the world. There are thousands of ways to build and every one of them is legitimate. What uh, has happened with uh, stick framing and with timber frame is simply the onward uh, uh, overwhelming technological change that we are seeing today. And in stick framing, one of the major big changes is that whole sections of framing today are being built in, uh, in factories. So an entire wall is built with all of the wiring in it, the exterior siding is on it, and even the interior is finished off in sections that are the width that can be carried down the road. So typically that would be 12 feet by as much as 53 feet long. So that's a big change that uh, makes the, uh, the building of stick framing a lot more efficient. When I was younger, you know, about 65 years ago, the uh, building of stick frame involved uh, five or six rusty pickup trucks and uh, 10 rather ragged looking guys in the snow with big long uh, nail hammers wailing away in, in misery for months to get uh, a frame built up. Today it's a far more efficient than that and uh, much more refined. What has happened to timber framing is the evolution, excruciatingly slow evolution of what are called panels. Frank Lloyd Wright as far back as the 30s and 40s, was building houses with pre-manufactured panels. Sears Roebuck sold entire houses that had panels that had sheets of metal on one side and wood on another and uh, composites in between. Today, we have SIP panels, structural insulated panels that are extraordinary. They can be anywhere from four inches thick to a foot and a half thick, and they can be anywhere from four feet wide uh, by as much as uh, 48 feet long and these are attached to the outside of timber frames and the savings in labor is phenomenal. The uh, machinery that exists for cutting out timber frames uh, is also uh, much advanced. The metallurgy and drills and saws and so on is dramatically advanced so that we can cut out an entire timber frame in three days. We can usually put up an entire fr timber frame because we now have hydraulic cranes, radio controlled. So the entire frame goes up in a morning at most on one day is used to put up a typical home. Time and labor, you know, it would take three people and a crane to put up an entire timber frame in a day. So there's huge uh, savings there. In addition, uh, these SIP panels, when they are screwed to the outside of a timber frame, make a structure that is extraordinarily strong. I did mention that in the, in the prior talk, and I need to emphasize it because it is a phenomenal advance in strength of structure against storms and earthquakes. A comment uh, that came up again and again from electricians. Licensed electricians commented that it would be a nightmare to wire uh, these homes. Not at all a nightmare. They're actually a lot easier. On something like this, you have to drill holes every 16 inches all over the place to string wires. On something like this, you simply buy an entire system in uh, eight foot lengths or 12 foot lengths or whatever, and attach it between the posts. And the post simply has one large hole drilled through the back of it. This one is already, technology has changed so fast, it's uh, mind boggling. <laughs> this one has, uh, a hard line telephone uh, in it. It has a stereo system in it, and it has an electrical system in it. And this is a plastic base with a wood veneer to make it look like it's either a baseboard on the floor. The code likes these things to be 18 inches above uh, the floor. This is one called Baseway. This is used in, uh, and has been used for at least 40 years in uh, business uh, situations. It's all plastic, and uh, you simply cut it to whatever length you want and it just goes along the floor, and it's uh, <clears throat> mop resistant. This is one that I made 
It's just three pieces of wood and the boxes fit right in it. And uh, depending on what your local inspector might wish, you might uh, add a metal plate on the inside here so that uh, screws and nails won't be able to go through. So <clears throat> there are lots of easy ways to uh, make what seems to be a problem <clears throat> uh, not at all uh, a problem. We had uh, thousands of comments and one that came up most is probably cost. Everyone out there is convinced that a timber framer costs more. We build uh, maybe 10 to 20 houses a year and that we've been doing that for 48 years. It's quite a few houses and uh, our prices have always been the same or slightly lower than stick frame. So there was absolutely no increase in cost uh, to go uh, stick frame. We just finished a house on Martha's Vineyard. We actually built a house a year ago in uh, Malibu, California. And because of the bureaucracy, the unbelievable bureaucracy in California, it was cheaper for them to have, uh, to, for us to build the building here and cart it on our own trucks all the way across the country and, uh, and put it up there uh, than it was for them to have uh, local folks build out of local wood. So cost ends up being what you make it be by looking at all of the alternatives, all of the ways that you're going to put it together. One person mentioned that in the Midwest, there was no wood to do a timber frame with, and therefore they had to do it all with two by fours. Well, they don't have two by fours in the Midwest either. <laughs> Both of those have to be hauled in on tractor trailer trucks. So it doesn't really make much difference whether you're hauling in two by fours or timbers. Timbers are very uh, available right now because we do have a number of blights all over the country and vast forests are dying uh, as a result of that. And uh, that wood is now being uh, cut and milled and stored every which way and is uh, quite inexpensive. And of course, uh, if you happen to have a lot with wood on it, it only takes 50 to 80 trees to build uh, quite a substantial uh, uh, building. The biggest savings with the timber frame is not the cost of the wood because it's the same as the cost of the uh, two by four building. It's in the labor. There's so much less labor involved in building a timber frame than there is in a stick frame building only because of the uh, technology of radio control cranes and, and woodworking tools that are so far more uh, viable than they used to be. I, I'm often asked the, uh, the simple question, should I build this myself? Uh, how much of it should I get involved in? If you're interested in doing it yourself and you're asking, should I do a timber frame or should I do a stick frame? I think the answer is quite easy. <laughs> doing the uh, timber frame is a, a lot uh, clearer and simpler and, and uh, handleable intellectually. There are way fewer pieces uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to do. Then, of course, there's the question of muscle. In the stick frame, you can pick up every single one of these pieces yourself. And, uh, and even carry it up a ladder and put it in place. Whereas here, uh, you can't pick uh, one up. But my wife and I, uh, when we were, I was uh, 19 when I was married, and she was 21, and she weighed about 110 pounds. And at that time, I was a, uh, on the varsity team as a wrestler in the 127 pound <laughs> class. And the two of us had no problems building a timber frame. We just used the come along, we hooked it to a tree, we used pivots to uh, uh, balance it off, and just the two of us together built the entire uh, structure. So uh, you don't have to be you know, an enormously strong muscular person to do it. The next question is just the, uh, the complexity of uh, engineering and designing the, uh, the whole thing. Today, and there are so many rules and regulations that it's, uh, it's hard to, for me to conceive of you getting away with getting permits and all that stuff without uh, resorting to an engineer. The, uh, with stick frame, that is probably not as much of an issue because it has been done so many times and the, the, uh, the building code covers it so thoroughly that the local building inspector will uh, typically write it off without even asking any questions. Whereas building inf inspectors are a little bit worried about signing off on a timber frame because they don't know a single thing uh, about them. So I would suggest that you do uh, go to an engineer. We actually provide those services here at Shelter Institute. We will do cut sheets that will show every single timber. There's a page for every one. So you'll have like 80 pages 
one for each timber. That shows exactly where every single uh, notch and mortise and, and uh, wiring hole and everything else uh, needs to be done. So you just go through it one page after another and it's all done. So that is one part that uh, I think would save you a great deal of time and, and anguish and, and turn the whole project into a, a joy. The, uh, the last one, of course, is uh, the weight of putting things in place. And today, there are just magnificent cranes out there that can be rented. As, uh, as I told you, we put up an entire timber frame typically in one day. So you can actually rent a crane and a crane operator. So you wouldn't even have to worry about running uh, the crane. And you simply have all of your bents built one on top of the other, you build one bent, then you build the next one on top of it. So they're all sitting there in place. And in one day, everything just gets put in place. It doesn't take more labor. It just takes the same people who did the notching plus the crane operator. So the, the labor saving is, uh, is phenomenal. And the biggest savings to me is time. These things go up in no time at all. You know, it takes one day to put all the sips on the frame, all the way around the frame, and one day to put all the sips on the roof. So that's two days. So it's three days worth of crane work and you're done. So it's a, it's a wonderful new way to build. And it's not one to replace others. It's just an additional way to uh, look at things. The reason that you would do a timber frame really is that you like timber frames. That's the main reason. You look at those timbers up there and oh boy, the rest of your life you get to see that. As opposed to somebody who hates those and they should get a uh, drywall uh, flat structure. So as a, uh, as a quickie wrap up, we're not really pushing timber frames because at Shelter Institute what we teach is construction. So we teach the, the assessment of every possible way to build. So something like a foundation, we look at the soil, we look at frost, we look at all the things that are involved in, front, in foundations, the ability to keep a bu building from being pulled up and out of the soil and so on. And then we look at 30 different foundations and see which one is appropriate to which place. We do the same thing with framing. We'll look at 15 different ways to frame and assess them all. And then once you know all of these different ways of uh, solving these problems, and once you mostly know the physics of what's supposed to happen, you know, when the wind hits this side, what's going to happen to all of these pieces and what does it take to resist it? And then you can calculate and put together the, the, the proper solution that will resist those. I didn't mean to look like I was pushing this one type of construction. We have here at Shelter, the Hennon family chosen this type of construction just because we love it. And for us, it's simply uh, what creates the finances that allow Shelter Institute to continue. We decided to become really good at one thing. So we hope that you uh, will uh, come to us and, and learn how to assess and, and uh, make appropriate choices of how to build uh, a, a structure that will be right for you and that will cost what you can afford to pay. We look at all of the all of the ingredients to construction so that you end up putting together a package that's just right for your situation. If you're in the mid coast area of Maine, please come and stop by. We have a beautiful campus here. Otherwise, check us out online. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.